Hello and welcome to the second video in our lightning course on the software asset lifecycle. Today we're going to be covering the second phase, uh, which is submitting a request. This includes a discussion on some process specifics around how end users are asking for their software. The end-to-end -end process for software requests should be very easy for your end users and you should automate this where possible and that's going to shorten the time to value when they get their software. End users want their software as soon as possible. The thing is if your process is overly engineered or overly complicated, it will not be followed at all and that creates a risk in your organization because then you've got end users taking the path of least resistance. In other words, they'll utilize their corporate credit cards or they'll call up their buddy in procurement and say, I need this software. They'll circumvent your process. Similar to the previous phase of identifying need, what we want to do here is utilize a software catalog in the phase of submitting requests. And that takes a lot of the guesswork out of the equation. End users are directed and required to select from a standardized catalog or listing of software instead of just coming up with their own ideas. This can also be a method to support standardization and correcting that end user bad behavior. So if a, if a non-standard request, so for example, something not in the software catalog gets input into the process, that should trigger a review and it should be reviewed by an asset acquisition committee. That group, that committee is usually comprised of cross-functional participants from multiple departments who help evaluate that request. So for example, IT security, IT infrastructure, or architecture management, maybe someone from the service desk, also the SAM or ITAM lead among other departments. If that non-standard request that's outside of the catalog doesn't pass evaluation from any of these departments, it gets denied. And then the end user is redirected back to that software catalog to choose one of the pre-approved options. Again, what you want to do is ensure that this entire process is pretty quick and easy for the end user. Otherwise, if that non-standard request gets denied and it's complicated, again, they're going to go uh, circumvent the process and find an alternative method, method how to get their software, how to do the procurement. So to facilitate that effective request process, you'll need automation, cooperation from other areas of the business, and a software catalog that aids in categorizing the end user requests. Well, how are you gonna ensure that they utilize that option in the first place? Policy management. As much as possible, you should remove those alternate options to the software request process. For example, if there's an IT to IT request portal, shut that down. If you have reimbursements for software that people purchase on corporate credit cards, stop that, cancel that. If you have software purchasing websites that are provided by the publishers or, or a reseller, disable that access. End users also have to be aware of what constitutes the acceptable behavior when they request software, why it's so important to follow the acceptable behavior, and indeed what the potential consequences are if they don't conform to that policy. So in that way, via policy management, you get to support and provide an efficient and smooth process, eliminate those potentially risky alternatives, and support governance of the acceptable behavior in submitting the request. Next step we're going to cover in the life cycle, the next phase, is procurement of a license. We'll discuss how these building blocks and governance topics support other departments and not just software asset management, such as procurement. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you've got any further questions about this phase in the life cycle, or of indeed ITAM topics in general, please visit our website and get in touch with us at anglepoint.com.